Today is a big day, my friends. We've got our forks at the ready and we're ready to take on the best food across all of Epcot. Is your stomach growling? Because things are about to get tasty. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Epcot is one of my favorite parks, like, of all time. I mean, it's got a little bit of everything. It's got world travel, it's got greenhouses, it's got seasonal festivals, it's got a giant glowing golf ball sphere thing. I know it's Spaceship Earth, it's a geodesic sphere, don't come at me, I get it. But one of the best things about this park is all that glorious food that sets it apart from so many theme parks out there. So today we're going on a food tour together to try track down the best eats across one of the best parks so that you never have to settle for the mediocre stuff. Are you excited? Because I'm excited. All right, we're gonna start with something we don't talk about too much here on the channel, but that's not because it's not worthy of it. Kakigori from Kabuki Cafe. It's colorful and sweet and refreshing all over. It's that amazing Japanese style shave ice covered in sweet flavored syrup and sweetened condensed milk if you want that. This shaved ice treat does not go subtle when it comes to syrups. Each bite is sweet and slightly fruity and an absolute lifesaver on a hot Orlando day. Just make sure you've got someone to help you finish this one. Although it's great to see such generous portion sizes, this also melts quickly, so you're gonna wanna make sure you get it all eaten up before it becomes a puddle in your bowl. Now for this next point, we've got a whole meal because all the food in this skillet deserves to be talked about. Every single bit of it. Yep, we're back at Garden Grill. You know me better than I know myself. The Chippendale Harvest Feast is basically like a Thanksgiving meal. You're gonna be served a skillet stuffed to the brim with grilled beef drizzled with chimichurri sauce, all natural sliced turkey breast with turkey gravy, creamy mashed potatoes, even creamier macaroni and cheese, seasonal vegetables like corn succotash and green beans, and super fluffy herb and leek stuffing. To be honest, character dining experiences don't always have the best food because you're mainly paying for the meet and greet experience more than top tier food quality and Disney knows that, but Garden Grill breaks the stereotype for me. Not only will you be able to enjoy a high quality meal, which you're going to be able to ask for seconds, thirds, maybe even fourths of whatever you want to since the harvest feast is served family style with all you care to enjoy portions, but you'll also get several opportunities to chat with characters like Mickey and Pluto and Chip and Dale, which makes sense. It's their harvest feast after all. But because this restaurant is smaller than a lot of other character restaurants, you're going to see these guys a lot more often than you would at, say, Chef Mickey's or Tusker House, which are huge restaurants. So great food, lots of character interaction. Oh, and did we mention that this particular restaurant rotates? That's right. Of course it does. It's literally like a restaurant, a character meet and greet, and a ride all rolled into one. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, I'm very, very, very excited to tell you about this next one. I'm not sure, I think we've talked about this on the channel maybe one time, but it is time to give it its due. The Loaded Burnt Ends Fries from Regal Eagle Smokehouse. So barbecue, plus mac and cheese, plus crispy fries, plus onion rings, pure bliss. The loaded burnt ends fries, which you can find at Regal Eagle Smokehouse over in the American Adventure Pavilion, that's right, Liberty Inn has turned into an actual good restaurant now, I know, shocking, is a big pile of seasoned french fries, burnt ends, macaroni and cheese, and beer battered onion rings. This thing is massive. We like to split it even if we're treating it as a meal rather than a snack because it's going to fill you up fast. But let's break down all the pieces and parts of this big guy. The fries have a dry rub on them, making them nice and salty, but the mac and cheese helps balance things out with that mild, creamy flavor. Then you add the crunchiness of the onion rings plus the chewiness of those burnt ends, which also, by the way, have so much flavor. And you've got yourself the array of textures and flavors complementing each other so nicely. Don't forget also over there, you've got that little sauce bar, bunch of different sauces you can try. So maybe if you're feeling adventurous, add a couple of different sauces in here. Or just try a couple of different sauces with different bites. I know, food really is a theme park, isn't it? Okay, on this next one, I'm feeling like a little bit of a traitor, and I'll tell you why in just a second. This is the Canadian cheddar cheese soup from La Cellier Steakhouse. So this one is a classic and it is iconic. The Canadian cheddar cheese soup appetizer from La Cellier is made with Moosehead Pale Ale and Nooski's Applewood Smoked Bacon, of course, and lots of cheese and onions and 
It's amazing. Now the smoky bacon flavor and the tang from the beer are two notes that stand out above the rest, making it one of the ultimate comfort foods for sure, especially in the winter time. But heads up, the Canada booth during Epcot's Food and Wine Festival usually has this very soup on their menu, so you don't have to make an advanced dining reservation to get it at La Cellier, because by the way, La Cellier is a signature meal and it's real expensive. Now, if you do make reservations for La Cellier, because it is really a nice romantic restaurant, then you'll want to order yourself a nice big steak to go along with your soup too. I just had the ribeye when I was there last week and it was phenomenal. But that also brings me to why I feel like a little bit of a traitor. So right now on the Cellier's menu, they have a seasonal corn chowder in addition to the cheddar cheese soup. And I was very torn on which one I should order. And because I've had the cheddar cheese soup a zillion times, I ordered the corn chowder. Please don't tell anybody. This is just between us, but I'm not going to lie. It was delicious too. So if you're headed to Epcot and La Cellier this summer, good luck making that choice, my friends, because it is a very, very difficult one. I suggest bringing a friend with you and each of you order one of them and then share them. Oh my goodness, I love this list. Next on it is the Turtle Brownie from Sunshine Seasons. This is unbelievably good and nobody knows about it. I have been talking about this for years and still I don't understand why it's not just like where everybody goes first thing they get to Epcot. Anyway, the Turtle Brownie is a dense chocolatey brownie with a thick layer of caramel topped even further with chocolate frosting and all sorts of crunchy goodies like chocolate chips and pecans or pecans, whatever you want me to say. It is incredible. Half of that brownie is just straight caramel. Oh my goodness. And I remember when they changed it, they changed the recipe, they changed the situation and it wasn't as good and it wasn't the same. So if you got it during that like year, I think that was like 2019 or something, try it again because it's back to its original incredible. Okay, I'll stop talking about it. I know, but it's so good. Oh, and it's super easy to get. It's just at the bakery display case. You can just pick one up for five bucks. It is more than the sum of its parts. Next up is one we haven't talked about in a V long time. We're still at Sunshine Seasons for this one, and we're gonna talk about the pizza rolls. But these are not the pizza rolls you're thinking. They're not like Totino's from your like freezer in the Publix or whatever. These are very different. If you're wanting to order something different for a change at Sunshine Seasons, you can trust me on this one. These pizza rolls are basically like a pizza that's completely rolled up and it's massive. And they also come with a side of pasta salad because why wouldn't you want that? Now, no matter which roll you choose, the breading is chewy with a touch of garlic and the mozzarella cheese is very nice and melty, but we tend to order the pepperoni more frequently because that adds just the right amount of spice to this ginormous roll up. If you're not too big on greasier food, <laughs> I, I don't know why you wouldn't be, then you may not be too keen on this one, but the grease isn't like overwhelming. It's like what you wanna have in a pizza roll like this. It's a little bit of grease, which means a whole lot of flavor. I'm gonna be honest about it. There's, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna mince words. You gotta have a little bit of grease to have a good pizza. Now, we're gonna finish up at Sunshine Seasons and head all the way over to Italy. Don't forget to take the boat if it's really hot and your feet need a break. Did you know there are boats that cross World Showcase Lagoon and they're totally free and you can just hop on them and head over? Yes, there are. You're welcome. But once you get to Italy, why just have one thing when you could have a lot? Nestled next to Tutto Italia Ristorante in Epcot's Italy Pavilion is Tutto Gusto. This is a cozy 96-seat bar themed like an Italian wine cellar. It is nice and cool in there. It is super chill. There are a couple of couches. Is. You're gonna love it just for the vibes, but it's also got several quality small plates or antipasti to pair along with those 200 plus types of Italian wines. So what do we got here right now? Cause the menu does change up. You've got the Fior de Latte Caprese made with fresh mozzarella, vine ripe tomatoes, basil, sea salt, olive oil, balsamic glaze, the Carpaccio di Manzo with charred Wagyu beef, arugula, Parmesan cheese, and lemon dressing, and the Taglieri, which is a charcuterie-like board with 
Prosciutto de Parma, Salonetto, Asiago, Gorgonzola, Fontina, Artichoke Hearts, Grissini, and Serenola Olive. That felt like a mouthful of food. Just picture fancy meats, cheeses, and a couple of veggies in the mix too, and that's what you've got. But this is not at all what you're gonna expect when you think about theme park food, right? This is like straight up authentic, incredible eats that you would find if you were sitting by a canal in Italy, right? So amazing stuff. Now, despite these being small plates, the prices are by no means small. This is the other side of the coin of how great this place is, right? The Caprese is gonna be your cheapest option at 17 bucks. The Taglieri board will be the most expensive at 39, so make sure you save for this extra dining splurge if you wanna go all out for lunch or dinner. But also remember, there's no reservations here. So if you don't have any place to eat and you're starving and you really want some good, authentic Italian food, head on over to Tutto Gusto and see if you can get a table. Despite its price tag, it's still a hidden gem that I still really enjoy and am willing to drop the money on once in a while. Next up is the Crema de Elote from La Hacienda de San Angel. La Hacienda has some great vibes going on, especially if you manage to get a table next to a window that looks out across World Showcase Lagoon. But what I look forward to most here is something that's actually elusive. The Crema de Elote, or the corn soup, is this cream corn-like bisque that's everything I could have ever wanted in a corn soup and then some. This is less about the corn and more about the cream. Think of it more like a creamy, buttery bisque with corn pieces tossed in there for good measure and a little sweetness. Now when the soup is available, it's poured out tableside into a bowl containing spicy julienne tortillas. So I guess you could say this singular bowl of soup contains the ultimate trifecta of flavors, savory, sweet, and a little bit spicy. Per the release of this video, the crema de elote is not available, but just recently one of our DFB reporters did ask a La Hacienda server if or when we'd be seeing it again, and we were told to check back in around September or October. Yay for soup season. Fingers crossed it's actually there. This has come and gone on the menu for many years, and it usually makes its way back. Even if you are here around the fall and you don't see this on the menu, make sure to just ask about it just in case. Sometimes they have this soup, but they don't advertise it, so you might have to do a little inquiring to make sure you don't miss out. Kind of like the strawberry soup over at Grand Floridian Cafe. Okay, next up is the pretzel bread pudding from Summerfest. Now, who knew leftovers could be used to create something so incredible? Inside the Germany Pavilion, you can order the pretzel bread pudding, which is made out of leftover pretzel bits, drizzled with a caramel butter scotch and white cream sauce. The main flavors with this snack are caramel and yet again, cinnamon, plus a few other baking spices, but the caramel is really the standout here. The white cream sauce tastes like a very subtle creme and glaze, but I honestly wouldn't mind if this sauce weren't subtle because it's very tasty. And this is also a dense snack. If you cut it in half, you can even see the pretzel pieces inside. One of the best parts about this dessert, you can order it for under five bucks. Now, a little bonus here, something else that has returned to the Summerfest menu, which I haven't talked about in a long time because it's not there, is of course that noodle gratin, that basically cube-shaped macaroni and cheese, which they do have in Beer Garden, but they don't have it back on the menu at Summerfest yet. So if you happen to go over here for the pretzel bread pudding, take a look and see if the noodle gratin is back. And if it is, please drop me a line and let me know because I need to head over there as soon as possible. Now here's one we haven't talked about really at all. It's not new, it's been around for quite some time, but it's not always something that you're in the mood for. But if you are, here we go. It's the churro ice cream sundae from La Cantina de San Angel. Now I like churros, I like ice cream, so do you, and when you put them together, this is fantastic. It's an $8 sundae. It's got caramel and vanilla swirl soft serve, which you can choose one or both, with caramel sauce and mini churros and fun decorative sprinkles. I don't care about the sprinkles, but if you want them, there they are. You can also add chocolate sauce if your heart desires. Now the caramel and vanilla soft serve is creamy and refreshing and heads up, we've tried to get the caramel all on its own just as like a cup of caramel soft serve, but it kind of freaked out the cast members a little bit and they weren't sure if they were allowed to do it. So don't ask for that, but it is there and it's part of the sundae, so that's great. The caramel sauce is nice and gooey and the churros are good. They're not exactly Disneyland good, but we're gonna look past that because what is, right? And the cinnamon sugar coating ties it all together for another wonderfully sweet treat inside the Mexico Pavilion. 
Now, we started with dessert, but we're going to go next to appetizers in Mexico once again, but we're heading inside the pyramid this time for queso and margs. I will always say yes to melty cheese served alongside margaritas, so the fact that La Cava del Tequila in the Mexico Pavilion has won my whole heart is no big shocker to anyone, and those of you who've been following this channel for a long time know that the queso at La Cava is one of my favorites. Now, you can pick up queso and chips at pretty much any Mexican restaurant in your hometown, but this creamy, spicy, super melty cheese dip is best paired with those unique margarita options, which are plentiful here. The marg flavors rotate out pretty consistently to give some exciting new options each time you pay this place a visit, but you also got some reliable ones in the mix too, like the El Diablo with fresh lime juice, agave, and cucumber jalapeno, and the La Cava Avocado with melon liqueur and fresh avocado and lime juice. This really tastes like bananas, I don't know why. Now, although La Cava does have pretty limited seating, enough for around 30 people, there is a to-go line if you want to grab those margs to go instead. But I do suggest having a little seat, getting some AC, having some queso, have a margarita and a little glass tumbler, whatever they call them. You can let me know in the comments. <laughs> what do you call margarita glasses? Just margarita glasses? Oh dear. My friends who work at La Cava are going to kill me. Anyway, go sit down, relax, take a breather, get a load off, all of those cliches, and have a margarita and some queso. Because it is now time to walk all the way over to the France Pavilion for the brioche ice cream sandwich from L'Artisan de Glace. If you are tired of the same old ice cream sandwiches from the grocery store, then the France Pavilion is going to restore your faith in ice cream sandwiches. The Croc Glace is a pressed brioche ice cream sandwich made at L'Artisan de Glace. So here's how it's concocted. You choose your preferred scoop of ice cream, then your preferred sauce, raspberry or chocolate, and watch as it's all pressed right before your eyes into a warm brioche bun. The pressed bread seals in the frozen ice cream for an enjoyable mixed sensation snack experience. You're like warm bread, cold ice cream. What a juxtaposition, right? But hold on, there may be another contender trying to compete for your affection over at Lardisan. You may want to order the ice cream martini instead. Now this treat delivers your choice of two delicious scoops of ice cream or sorbet topped with rum, whipped cream vodka, or Grand Marnier. It's a delicious frosty treat for grown-ups and a personal a longtime favorite of ours. All right, are you ready for some more Italian food? We're headed to Via Napoli Ristorante, a pizzeria. Disney World foods come and go, but the Quattro Formaggi pizza from the Italy Pavilion has been a part of my life now for the past decade, and I'm totally happy with that. The Quattro Formaggi is a white pizza covered with a mixture of mozzarella, parmesan, fontina, and provolone. So those of you who don't love a blue cheese on your white pizza, that's not what's gonna be here. The fontina is a tiny bit of a stronger cheese but it's not nearly a blue cheese so you're not gonna have to worry too much and your kids will probably still like it too now if you're not in for a four cheese pizza there are several different artisan pizzas you can choose from besides the quattro formaggi including the prosciutto e melone picante with spicy sausage and carciofe with artichokes and truffle oil they're all made right in house in those three giant pizza ovens that are named after the italy volcanoes Next on our list, fish and chips from Yorkshire County Fish Shop. All right, sometimes all you need is a simple basket of fish and chips to satisfy you. In fact, that's most of the time, right? But it's a win-win if the fish and chips really happen to be good, like the kind you're gonna find in the UK pavilion. Traditionally, chips over in the UK refers to fries, of course, which is what you can expect from this entree too. And these aren't those shoestring fries, these are real thick cut steak chips, but don't you worry, they're still crispy too. As far as the fish goes, it's got this mild and slightly sweet flavor with a breading that's not too heavy while still being satisfyingly crispy. Again, this is another one of those that might be too greasy for some, but it's not greasy in a way that it's drenched. It's just what naturally happens when you rev up those beer batter fryers. Fun fact, the Attached Rose and Crown restaurant sells the same fish and chips at a higher price. Well, is it the same? I don't know. The chef would probably tell you it's not, but we've done taste tests of both and it's very similar, although we do kind of like the Yorkshire County Fish Shop fish and chips better. I don't know what that says about us. Anyway, the fish and chips is about 13 bucks at Yorkshire. Rose and Crown still sells theirs for 26. So if you got a hankering for this classic UK entree, go the quick service route for a cheaper meal. It's a little bit smaller, but it's plenty of food and it's still delicious. Plus, you don't need a dining reservation, eh? Whoa, now we're in Canada. 
Okay, we're headed over to Germany next for the Caramel Butter Bar at Caramel Kusha. There aren't really any bad choices at the Caramel Kusha display case because it's hard to go wrong with fresh caramel, but we do have some tried and true favorites out of the bunch. Take the Butter Bar, for instance. This is a little dessert made out of shortbread, rich caramel, and butter. This Simply Sweet treat is one of my all-time favorites, but I'm also partial to whatever buttercream cookie sandwich they have available at the time. They used to have that gingerbread salted caramel buttercream cookie sandwich which is amazing and it will come back for the holiday season I believe right now they have a snickerdoodle buttercream cookie sandwich so you go ahead and get that one too and yes, we're headed back to the France Pavilion. We're walking a lot on this day because we're having a lot to eat, everyone. We need a little bit of space between those dishes, right? So we're back in France, and we are, of course, at Layal. And I know the last time we were in France, a lot of you were screaming at your screens, why aren't we going to Layal? Well, don't worry, we're here. There are so many solid options at this boulangerie and patisserie. They've got savory and sweet stuff, tasty and affordable. Layal Boulangerie Patisserie is a cutesy bakery packed with sweet and savory options. And in the past, some of our team's personal favorites from this patisserie have been the strawberry tart with vanilla cream topping, the Napoleon stuffed pastry layered with cream. They did change this one a couple of years ago, so it's a little bit different now. The mousse au chocolat, that's a chocolate mousse. Y'all know I love the frangipane here, the jambon bear, which is basically a super fancy ham and cheese sandwich, which I, I love love it. I don't know. I don't know what magic they put in here. Probably butter. The lobster bisque in a bread bowl. That's right. You can get lobster bisque in a bread bowl in Epcot. You did not know, did you? Maybe you did. Raise your hand. The quiche Lorraine with ham and gruyere. Oh my goodness. Incredible. And you can even just get a giant baguette for four bucks. Just walk around Epcot chewing on bread. Nothing wrong with that. Seriously, this is a great place to check out for breakfast, lunch, dinner, or a light snack. It's incredible. The lines can get real long, though. Quick heads up on that. By the way, Mimosa's here at 9 a.m. Next on the list, back to Rose and Crown, Shepherd's Pie. Okay, this option is actually really funny to me because I personally hate Shepherd's Pie. In fact, I hate it so much that when I was growing up, I was actually sent to bed with no dinner once because my dad made the Shepherd's Pie recipe from Rose and Crown because my brother loved it so much when we had eaten it in Epcot and I refused to eat it. And so I was sent to bed with no dinner and... I have extra despised it ever since. Like my hatred of this dish is mostly based on my parents calling me out for my selfishness when I was a kid. So, you know, there we go. We can dig into that in therapy. But many folks here on the DFB team have me outvoted to say that yes, the shepherd's pie is a solid rose and crown option. Because honestly, why wouldn't you like it, right? It's ground beef, vegetables, English peas, mashed potatoes, and cheddar cheese. What is wrong with that? There's literally nothing wrong with that. I have no idea what's wrong with me. This is just a bowl full of deliciousness, so I probably need to try it again. Personally, though, you're never going to find me straying away from the bangers and mash at Rose and Crown. It's topped with mushroom, onion, red wine, demi. I think the big takeaway here is that you're going to find a lot of solid British comfort food at this table service joint for a lot of different palate types. But yeah, please bring me and please just let me get the bangers and mash and don't ask to share it because I absolutely love this. Anyway, this is about shepherd's pie. So go ahead and get that too, I guess. Okay, next on our list, every single solitary festival booth in Epcot. Come on now, we can't talk about the best food in Epcot without giving the Epcot festivals a shout out. Each of Epcot's four seasonal festivals features lots of booths dedicated to global cuisine. Recently, we've been in the midst of flower and garden where we've gotten to enjoy new and returning options like the orange blossom saffron cake from Tangerine Cafe, the avocado toast at Brunch Cot, the chicken and waffles at the Honey Bistro, and the taco Vampiro at Hardin de Fiestas over in Mexico. Now, while we love so many of the items across each of the festivals, not all of them are winner winner chicken dinner, and that's why we create our updated DFB festival guides with each new festival to cover all the different foods and fest offerings before you get to the park and purchase an item you might regret. These ultra detailed digital guides can be found over on dfbstore.com. Just make sure you type in the code YouTube to save some money on your overall purchase. 
Next on our list is the omakase tasting menu at Takumi Te. All right, everyone, it is time to get real fancy. Inside the Japan Pavilion, you're going to find one of the most expensive restaurants, not just in Epcot, but in all of Disney World. Takumi Te translates to House of the Artisan, and its cuisine and atmosphere are inspired by Japan's natural beauty. When you dine here, you're going to be able to choose between two different omakase menus, the kiku, which is meat-based, or the hasu, which is plant-based. If you choose the omakase kiku, menu, you're going to pay $250 per adult for a seven-course prefix meal specially selected by the chef. We're talking lobster tempura, Japanese A5 wagyu steak, roasted duck, sushi, sashimi, chestnut creme brulee. Basically, what I'm trying to say is come hungry. Takumi Te also has a variety of sakes, specialty cocktails, and Japanese beers you can add to your meal. But I think this goes without saying that this place ain't somewhere you're just going to stumble into and hope for the best. It's a multi-hour experience that's great for those who love exquisite food and a lot of it and are A-OK -okay with taking a lot of time out of their park day just to experience it. Who it's not good for are those who don't want to spend hundreds on a single meal or those who have kiddos who are going to be real peeved off that half their park day is going to be spent at a single restaurant. What I will say is that this food is amazing, but at that price, it should be, right? Oh, we're back to a classic. Whether it's breakfast time or snack time, Kringla Bakery Og Cafe in the Norway Pavilion is going to hook you up with some fresh baked desserts and pastries all day long. One of the staple items from this little sweet stop is the school bread, a fluffy sweet roll filled with custard and dipped in coconut and icing. Now, while the DFP team can be split on this one, those who love all things coconut are going to want to pick this one up for under $5. It's also not too sweet so this is a great dessert option for people who maybe aren't into something that's just overpoweringly sugary. But if you're not a fan of coconut, there are still plenty of other iconic items you can pick up from the display case instead. The apple cake is an apple cake with caramel drizzle. The Norwegian Kringla is a pretzel-shaped pastry with either almond or chocolate chips sprinkled on top. And the Lefse is a simple soft flatbread rolled with cinnamon, sugar, and butter. I personally am not a fan of this one, but a lot of folks say if you ask them to warm it up, it tastes a lot better. I don't know, some people love it, some people hate it, so poll your friends. Now we're headed over to another kiosk snack stand that is hiding a true gem. A traditional poutine with cheese curds and gravy is divine as is, but it's always nice to shake things up, and that's exactly what the refreshment port likes to do. Refreshment port likes to serve up poutine with a twist during each of the Epcot festivals. Now they do usually just have their regular traditional poutine, which is incredible as well, but the seasonal one you might enjoy even more, depending. In the past, we've been able to pick up poutine Poutine varieties with beef brisket, duck confit, and even turkey poutine around the holidays. And because these poutines change with the seasons, you're going to want to check out the refreshment port menu on the Disney World website ahead of time to see what's going to be available for your trip. Also, we'll of course order every single new poutine that comes around. They usually come around with the festival changes, so we'll get them on festival day one. Oh no, here's another one we don't talk about very often, but we should. It's time for a quick, satisfying snack, and this one comes pretty cheap. Joy of Tea is an unassuming kiosk in the China Pavilion. It's going to hook you up with two nice-sized pork egg rolls for under five bucks when you're needing a savory afternoon pick-me-up. By the way, Joy of Tea also has a variety of incredible beverages. We're going to talk about them in just a second. Now, these egg rolls come out tender and crunchy with a nice pork to veggie ratio packed into each wrapper. And you're going to find packets of soy sauce and other condiments available too, just in case you want to add more savory flavors to your snack. But don't forget to pick up a drink option as well. They have several different teas, but they also have that tipsy duck in love cocktail, which has been around for several years now. It's got a funny name, but it's a combo of iced coffee, tea, whipped cream, Jim Beam bourbon, and chocolate. It's the perfect way to balance out that savory flavor of the egg rolls, but it might pack a punch. Headed back to the France Pavilion, we're going to Chefs de France, which is an authentic French bistro with several staple French entrees, appetizers, and desserts like escargot, onion soup gratinée, and creme brulee. But the entree we return to time and again, no shock here, the gratin de macaroni made with cream and gruyere cheese. This is no ordinary mac and cheese. It's a baked macaroni that's served directly to your table after spending a minute or two under the broiler. So like take a second before you take a bite because it's going to be hot. 
If you like your macaroni rich and creamy and fancy, then this cult classic favorite's gonna make you one happy camper. But beware, this is one of the more expensive macaroni dishes on property, clocking in at around $26. How much Gasparilla Island Grill mac and cheese can you get for 26 bucks? a lot. Now, when that noodle gratin from Summerfest is available, I will gravitate toward that instead of this, since it's still got that creamy, dense flavor at a way more reasonable price and no reservations necessary. But since it's not back yet, per the release of this video, we can settle on the gratin de macaroni and be perfectly content, though our wallets will not come out unscathed. Now I'm gonna add this next one because I am unbelievably excited about it. We are always up for adding a new entry to our best of list. And I am hoping that some of the options from the new Japan Pavilion restaurant opening later this year are gonna win a spot on my list and in my heart. I already know they are because they're gonna have chicken karage and I'm gonna love it. Anyway, Shiki Sai Sushi Izakaya will be a table service restaurant featuring a festive dining experience in a shareable izakaya style. Now, izakaya is basically a Japanese pub. So be prepared for lots and lots of sushi, a small plate like that chicken karage, salmon misoyaki, and tomato salad with avocado. There's just gonna be a bunch of stuff here for everyone. While we know we can expect this new spot to open this summer, Disney hasn't shared an official opening date just yet. We're gonna make sure to keep you updated when we hear more about it. So Epcot's food options update constantly, and there are so many more that we could have added to this list. We are aware of this, and we will continue to put out videos about eating at Epcot, I promise. But if you think you've pegged a favorite or two out of today's list of ultimate eats, don't forget to keep checking back here with us so we can keep you in the loop when it comes to all things Disney eats. Now, also, please let us know in the comments if there are things you love in Epcot that you want to let other folks know about, because don't forget, what you say in the comments is read by other people who watch the videos, so help them out, give them a heads up on things you love to eat in Epcot so that everybody has a chance to share, so that nobody misses out. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.